single save. And it's a terrific effort. Oh, what a goal. He's done really well. He scored a super goal. York's excellent home form this season has already produced eight victories and their striker in chief is Ian Helliwell with 13 goals already. The six foot three striker has a new partner today because of David Longhurst's injury which will keep him out for the rest of the season. Reed, the former England player of course and that's a good ball forward to Colville who cuts it back but straight for the defender who manages to turn it back to Wallington with Helliwell coming in. Uh, we're going to have a lot of those sort of challenges this afternoon. It's desperately disappointing for a team among the promotion favourites earlier in the season, but Ian Dunn's return appeared to inspire them, and his cross set up Helliwell for number two. York City is still catching up on the rest in terms of games, and they certainly had their chances to beat Cardiff City. Ian Helliwell was the first to be rather unlucky, the header off the inside of the upright. At Saltergate, Chesterfield got off to their customary awful start against York. Their former striker Ian Helliwell scored first at the far post. And as Halifax meant the league's 89th club playing the 92nd. Not much entertainment here? Don't you believe it. Seven minutes gone, Ian Helliwell's fourth goal in seven games. <laughs> Quarter hour and three minutes later, the fourth division's biggest surprise of the day was complete. Good deep cross from Hall, Helliwell out jumps the goalkeeper, Naylor the scorer. York City 2, Burnley 0. Third minute, Tony Dawes down the left, and Ian Halliwell's first goal since his £80,000 move from York. Doncaster have just borrowed Dylan Kerr from Leeds. Good idea. But the score stayed level for just two minutes. Doors again picking out Helliwell and Graham Alexander in where it hurts. 2-1 in 16 minutes and it could have been 3-1. Dylan Kerr almost a little too cool for his manager's heart rate. But he made amends with this free kick five minutes into the second half. Another former Leeds man Brendan Ormsby off the crossbar and Tommy Tynan's first goal since arriving from Torquay. One of the few men with as many clubs behind him as Tony Cunningham. Billy Bremner expects a hatful of goals from him this season. He could well be right but this was Scunthorpe's day. Halliwell's height again doing the damage. Dawes with the finish. Three defeats out of three for the Dons. Scunthorpe three, Doncaster two. Martin hooked it on and now Dawes gives chase and gets, uh, cuts inside Watts. Good play from Dawes, turns his man inside out and scores an absolute cracker of a goal. That really is the best of Tony Dawes. And wrestling for it and first Hamilton and then Humphreys did enough to deny him but the ball's been given away straight to Helliwell by Watts and he's playing Dawes in. If he controls it he might get the second. Well, that was uh, one of the highlights of the game. There's a lovely ball from Helliwell, and Dawes on the right foot, rather cursing his luck here. He scored one, and this would have been a spectacular second, taking it on the instep, and he was a bit unlucky there. So we've seen the best of Tony Dawes in the last few minutes. That's a good flick on from Alexander to Helliwell. He tries to relocate his man. Rotherham gained a somewhat fortunate lead at Scunthorpe with Cunningham's shot being deflected into the net. But the iron drew level when Ian Helliwell got high above the Miller's defence. Morning kickoff at Glanford Park and Scunthorpe were first out of the blocks. Ian Helliwell on target against the leaders Burnley. Then Graham Alexander kicked thin air and Jason White gobbled up his 13th of the season. It was Scunthorpe who forged ahead. Four minutes after half-time, Hill's corner missed by both Mark Elliott and Ian Helliwell. But Ian Hamilton, who'd struck a winner against Crewe back in September, pulled the ball back, and Helliwell was there, this time to satisfy referee Gifford the ball had crossed the line. 
And there's the proof. All that was missing was a goal for the inform Ian Helliwell, and that wasn't long delayed. The Carlisle defence present now only in spirit and not much spirit at that. Four in four for Helliwell, Scunthorpe's fourth playoff in five years. Scunthorpe four, Carlisle nil. We've just about Two all with Helliwell scoring both the crew in their playoff first leg. The inform forward was soon on target again, and Scunthorpe will be favourites to progress from Wednesday's second leg into the final at Wembley with a place in. His daughter Victoria as mascot leads out his Scunthorpe United side for what is a high spot in any football career. For them, it's a bit of history. The first time any Humberside team has made it to Wembley. The prize at stake is promotion. It's the fourth year out of five that Scunthorpe have reached the playoffs, but the first time they've made the final. They sealed victory in the dying seconds against Crewe in the semi-final ten days ago. Unleashing scenes of mass joy, Scunthorpe on their way to Wembley. And around 9,000 fans have travelled down from Humberside. That's about one in 10 of the town's entire population. It's a hot, sultry day at Wembley. Let's check on the two lineups for you. Scunthorpe are unchanged for the ninth successive game, which means Jason White, their second top scorer with 13, stays on the bench. Two players with Wembley experience, Tony Dawes with England Schoolboys and Matt Elliott. There he is. He's on loan from Torquay, for whom he played here in their victory over Blackpool in last year's playoff final. The Blackpool 11 today includes nine men who played that day against Torquay. The exceptions are the fullbacks Dave Burgess and Mitch Cook. Top scorer Dave Bamber, whose missed penalty 12 months ago lost the match for Blackpool, plays despite needing an operation on his knee. And today's referee, one of the most experienced in the game, Keith Hackett from Sheffield. And it's Blackpool in the tangerine shirts, playing from left to right to get us underway. But if the experience of this occasion favours Blackpool, then it's Scunthorpe who have the better form unbeaten in their last ten games. In Baez. Away by Longdon, and Hill has space. Has he got the confidence to go himself? Doors. Buckley. Joyce arriving to his right. There he is. Two in the penalty area to Amat. And into Halliwell, got the header. And away by Phil Horner. But Ian Halliwell, such an awkward customer, the former York City player. And Phil In by Longdon, curling a bit. Goalkeeper again uncertain, but this time the referee gives him the free kick. Ian Halliwell this time the judge to challenged unfairly Steve McElhargy. But he's had an awkward couple of minutes at the hands of Ian Halliwell. Hill's header. Amber, but nobody in front of him. Easy for Elliot. Well time run, Hamilton, here's Hill. Played in a little touch from Hamilton, and it was what? A foot over. Timed his arrival absolutely perfectly. Hill might have thought about the shot here. This is roughly where he scored three games against Carlisle, just like that. Played it in unselfishly. Hamilton's flick. A foot over. That's the best chance of the match for Ian Hamilton. No question about that. Four years at Scunthorpe. Here's Garner for Blackpool. Paul Longman's 
challenge. Nicely done by Rodwell. Go back to challenge. That's two attempts to clear, both unsuccessful. Bamba! Dave Bamba! And does that make up for a year ago? One of the easiest goals he's ever scored, but they don't care how easy it was. That's what happens if you give a man who's six foot three that much space a yard out. Scunthorpe had two attempts to clear there. Hill tried, Longdon tried, both failed. And Bamba left with the easiest of headers. Nicely placed. Blackpool one, Scunthorpe nil, and it's 36 for the season for Dave Bamba. So Scunthorpe find themselves a goal down on their first ever appearance at Wembley. So it's one very happy, colourful set of fans who've come down the M6 and the M1. And the fans who've come down the M180 and the M1, much less happy. So we approach half-time. Indeed, we're at half time. And Dave Bamba, the man who was the unhappiest man in football 12 months ago, is the man who gives Blackpool a half time lead. And it came only minutes after Scunthorpe had had a great chance to go in front themselves. Who knows what will happen in the second half? You can find out after this break. to Wembley, Scunthorpe a goal to nil down to Blackpool as we start the second half, Scunthorpe picking from left to right and they have 45 minutes in which to keep alive their chances of promotion this season Martin space here Great effort, great shot, Tony Dawes. What a way to come back. Bill Green off the bench. They came out, they came storming out in the second half. Laid off beautifully. First time, how about that? for Hill with space Halliwell screaming for it on the far post on Marks Hill hasn't seen it. he might go all the way on his own right footed didn't get the power Dave Hill tried on his own when Halliwell was screaming for it in plenty of space on the far post but that's easy to see from up here here's the corner swung in by Hill Halliwell was up there 90 minutes are up and Dave Bamba, who scored the... John Buckley, who is one of the two men that Scunthorpe are looking to bring off. The other is Dawes, the goal scorer. Well, Dawes might be going out with a flourish here. But in fact, the avenue closed. And Blackpool here have chances with space. Three against four. Ayers. Bamba. Oh, Dave Bamba must do. Oh, Dave Bamba. Belted forward by London. One for White to chase. Well taken by Rodwell. Garner inside him. Bamba arriving. Tony Rodwell. Could have won it for them. Goalkeeper did well, and the goalkeepers have done well this afternoon. The last chance is gone. And for the second successive season, as the two managers, good friends, it's been a well fought match. And for the second successive season, the fourth division playoff final will be determined by a penalty shootout. 
One one it is as we go into penalties. But the Iron were not to be denied, only their second home win of the season. Ian Helliwell with plenty of time and space to nod in a third. Scunthorpe three, Colchester one. Garvey. Second round, first leg, top of Leeds. And Ian Helliwell gave them a glimmer of hope with the opener early on. But that was quickly extinguished by Rod Wallace's first goal since his injury layoff, reacting first to the keeper's mistake. Scunthorpe did at least have the satisfaction of leading the league champions twice on the night. Helliwell again on target on the stroke of half time. But Lee Chapman's second half equaliser left the final score two a good. And not the first of September. His second was only four minutes away. This time Ian Helliwell setting him up. Scunthorpe three, Hereford one. Scunthorpe, whose best run has come too late to figure in any celebrations, completed success on the day with a close range shot from Ian Helliwell. But it was the North London club who ran to their jubilant fans at the final whistle. Barnet in Division 2 after only two seasons of league football. Scunthorpe 2, Barnet 0. Well, Walsall right up at the top of the table, of course, but Scunthorpe applying the pressure now as they do with a tremendous charge down this touchline from White. The ball in. Halliwell may score. He does. Banks the scorer. Wayne Jacobs and Ian Helliwell were involved in the build-up for the second, Bermudian international Sean Goethe getting the final touch. And Goethe it was who chipped the ball into the path of Tony Bryan to complete the Miller's biggest win. The hesitancy in the Miller's defence. Rotherham beaten 2-1 by a better organised team, their late consolation from Ian Helliwell darts the ball. After only three minutes, plenty of time and space for Martin James on the left to size up his options. And at the far post, Ian Helliwell proved too good for the home defence. But Oxford's... It's going to be difficult to recognise the side this afternoon as I think everyone bar Ian Helliwell and Jim Gannon has had a crew cup. So I'm not sure that Ian Helliwell hasn't. So they're uh, they've all had a job lot, bargain basement haircut. They get an offside decision his way. Free kick against Ian Helliwell. The foot was very high, and an early chance for County. Oh, no piece of ward. It'll be interesting to see whether either Bennis or Ware can conjure up anything direct from the free kick it's Tom Bennett he's going to take it a host of players running in Helliwell oh he's there in the fifth minute stop up county season gets underway Tremendous free kick. Five or six players coming in, and number nine Ian Helliwell with a tremendous goal. Beyond the grasp of James Walker, and County take the lead. Paul Ware. Well, again, the target, he gets there. Oh, the defender took it away. Armstrong. Off the line and away for a corner. And Walsall lucky to escape. Great move again. Halliwell again causing problems for the Walsall defence. Stuart Ryder with a clearance. Great cross that flew across the top of the Warsaw back four, found Helliwell at the back and right in the corner. He's buried it, it's 2 0.
actually uh, it was thought about by me and Tom just prior to coming out uh, this afternoon. Uh, I just had a quick word with Tom. If we, if we did get a free kick in a position like that, just have a quick look up as he was approaching the ball. And if he saw me stepping forward a yard, just to clip it in there. And he put a great ball in today and I managed to get in front of the centre half and stick it away. Now, the second goal was, a, was totally different. You were right at the end of what looked like a host of players in front of you. Tell, tell, us, uh, tell us about the goal from your uh, point of view. I think um, Toddy had it wide on the left and put in a great cross and Chris Beaumont uh, made a run in front of me. And uh, I shouted to him to just touch it on and he managed to just get a touch and I managed to flick it and it luckily it went in the top corner. <laughs> Very well came behind uh, Lee Sanford and got the ball to Oliver. Armstrong now with a chance. Oh, lucky. Bennett, time to have a look. Oh, and massive shout by the keeper was ignored. Good ball by Chris Beaumont. Now then. Helliwell! Oh, the keeper somehow kept it out. And Chris Beaumont from the edge of the area trying to find the corner of the net. Ian Helliwell trying to add to his brace on Saturday. Actually, Todd will take. Armstrong makes himself available. Quickly gets closed down by two. Good ball back to Todd. Oh, magnificent goal! Ian Helliwell. Tremendous header. A superb cross. And after 311 minutes of failing to find the net, Ian Helliwell breaks the deadlock and County take the lead 1-0. Well, that's liven things up. And Ian Helliwell is the scorer of all Stockport County's three league goals. Oh, and Helliwell steals it off Hodge, finds Armstrong, he's on his own. Oh, he's took an inflection! Magnificent finish by Alan Armstrong. In the 78th minute, Stockport County deservedly go 2 0 in front. And full credit, Ian Helliwell. He stole a ball, County had no right to win from John Hodge. Fed Alan Armstrong, who turned away from two defenders. I think it was Edwards who actually attempted to block the shot. And all he did was succeed in sending the ball over the head of Roger Freestone. And the Chile end stand at last have a goal, a Stockport County goal to celebrate. Todd, back to Chalk. Good turn inside by Chalk. The queuing up, Helliwell. Gotta be! And it is! Jeff Eckhart in the 48th, 58th minute. Stockport County level on the night and back in front on aggregate. Good work down the left by Todd and Chalk. Chalk cut inside. Deep cross to Helliwell who pulled it back well. And Jeff Eckhart has put County level. Flint. Helliwell. Oh, yeah, it's in! Oh, what a great goal! Flynn and Helliwell combining. In Stockport County take the lead. Helliwell's fourth of the season. An assist for Michael Flynn. And that's a 3-1 aggregate lead for County. Uh, I don't think that was the best performance we've had all season, but we got the right result in the end, didn't we? 
Yeah, I think first half we struggled a little bit. Um, and the manager let us know in no uncertain terms at half time. And I thought second half we came out and we uh, battled a lot better and played some good stuff and, and uh, thought we deserved to go through. It's a, bit, it's a bit ironic that we play as well as we did against Bristol City and get nothing. And then we get the right result here tonight. That's right, that's the way football goes. I mean, you don't always get what you deserve, but uh, I think tonight the way we battled, although we didn't play so well first half, um, you know, I think we, over the two legs, we deserve to go through. Ball on. on the right and his cross on the edge of the six yard area finds Ian Helliwell at the far post and counts Helliwell good chance flick on from Helliwell the long throw danger again and number six making a nuisance of himself and the increasingly familiar blonde figure of Alan Armstrong fired home Bradford's lowest crowd of the season, under 4,000. Paul Tomlinson has probably saved this once an hour last night, but not on the pitch. That they didn't was largely due to Ian Helliwell, a familiar name in this region. His header set up Chris Bowman for County's opener in the 12th minute. Helliwell, previously with York and Scunthorpe, only arrived at Stockport on loan from Rotherham on Friday. Having had a hand in the first, he then scored the next two himself. All this was tough on Hull who not only had more of the play, but also forced 12 corners to County's three. But it's goals that count, and they don't come much better than this. A pinpoint cross and a brave diving header from the man that's now worth a few thousand pounds more than he was when he started the game, if Rotherham want to sell him after seeing these pictures. It was something of a surprise when Helliwell wasn't involved in Stockport's fourth right on full time. Some one-touch interplay on the edge of the box ended with Alan Armstrong finding space to beat Steve Wilson with an angled drive. Stockport 4, Hull City 0. They found form, and yesterday against leaders Carlisle, they were given a helping hand when the home side had Rob Thomas sent off. They looked likely to take full advantage when veteran striker Ian Helliwell headed them into a 76-minute lead. County soon had their noses in front again with Ian Helliwell on the end of John Jeffers' deep centre final Dave Watson and Flynn will produce another one of those long throws Helliwell flicks it on Matthew Bond a good long throw again by Michael Flynn and it always caused confusion and a pile of bodies, and in the middle of them was Matthew Bound. It was Helliwell's flick on, it was helped by a defender as well, and in the middle of the clutch of defenders, Matthew Bound, the former Southampton trainee, who they picked up from Southampton's reserves just over a year ago. Here's Jeffers, good turn by Jeffers. Helliwell's underneath it, oh! Well, at six foot three, he might really have done better with that. It was a beautiful ball played to him. Great turn by Jeffers. And Helliwell towers over the defenders here, wins it cleanly. Well, that might well have been number two. Armstrong. Oh, nice touch. I can't. Oh, nice turn as well. Good play, Connolly. Oh, not a good cross, he might get a second chance. Huge clip by uh, Edwards. Armstrong! Good header by Halliwell, who got the better of Gary Ablett. Good header again by Halliwell, he's won most of the aerial battle so far.
to Armstrong. Good play by Armstrong. Bennett. Halliwell. Yes! Oh, Grace! Yes! Oh, I got it! He's earned it! That was magnificent! Alan Armstrong, after another self that made one brilliant save, was unable to do anything about Armstrong's effort. I can't see a buck on level terms. The goal coming in the 32nd minute. Then Halliwell receiving treatment again. No, he couldn't. Come on. Good run back by Halliwell. Bennett. Slips on the turf. No, you're all right. Oh, that's not a bad looking ball. Good header as well by Stewart. Well read by Lee Tom. Oh, what a great ball by Tom. A counter with three up. Chris Beaumont, first side cross. Oh, what a beauty! What an absolute beauty! That was tremendous. The ball from Todd, the first side cross from Chris Beaumont. Jackson. Intercepting again. Armstrong. Jeffers. Todd. County throw. Chelskis. Beaten by Ken Chelskis. And in the end, John Jeffers. Good looking ball as well to Halliwell. That's not a bad header if Armstrong can get on the end of it. And he could. Oh, and he's taken away from Ian Halliwell. Front two for Southall County, causing all sorts of problems for the Premiership form team, it must be said, and FA Cup holders. Sorry again, cuts out the supply line to Konchelskis. Oh yes, very nicely done. Oh, that's so well worked and in the end it was well yeah. has got to get booked for uh, reacting to the offside decision well, really 
no need for that really from the referee. Ian Halliwell, I take it you know you've been in a game this afternoon, do you? Yeah, a bit of a game. Uh, thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, I mean, if you don't enjoy games like that, you shouldn't be playing the game. And uh, I think today we just set about, you know, set about it the right way and took the game to them. Didn't sit back and defend. I mean, that's a waste of time coming to a place like this. And I think in the end, uh, we feel that we should have won the game. Um, tell us about your goal, because it, uh, it was a real cracker. Yeah, I remember uh, being at the back for some free kick of theirs or something and Toddy got the ball on the edge of the box and played a great ball out onto the, the outside of his foot to Chris on the wing and I just set off towards the back post. Chris looked up and saw me, put in a great cross and managed to dive in and it went in the bottom corner. Uh, great feeling. And you set off going the other way and then remembered where the county fans were and turned around, didn't you? Uh, I don't know where I was going at first and then, I, as you say, I remembered they were behind me so I thought I'd better turn around and head towards them. They were magnificent today. Now, you missed the Villa game. I think you were, you were injured at the time, weren't you? Um, you didn't waste any, any time today in getting involved. You took a hell of a lot of stick this afternoon, didn't you? That's right. I mean, uh, I was devastated to miss the uh, Villa game when I uh, twisted my knee. Uh, but these things happen. And uh, I'm, I was going to definitely making sure that I wasn't going to miss today. And uh, went out there to thoroughly enjoy it. And, uh, that, you know, that's the way it turned out. How does Dave Watson rate as a defender? Yeah, he's a good player. Uh, big, strong lad. Um, very good in the air. And I'd say I've not, never played against him before. And uh, you know it was a good battle today. I thought, and uh, you know he's one of the, one of the strongest. Did Dave Jones, but all the hype with him, obviously an ex-club of his and everything else, was there was there much realism in his hype for the for the game this afternoon? Well, I think he tried tried to play it down a little bit. You know, and we knew uh, what the gaffer felt about today's game, uh, how important it was for him come back to his old club, and uh, you know we went out there to try and do the best for him. And as I say, he tried to play play it down a little bit. I think before the game, to just go out and enjoy it. And, uh, but we knew what effect it would have on him, and I'm just, you know, so happy for him today. Final word for the support that was here this afternoon for Stockport. Oh, what can you say? It was magnificent. I mean, I don't know how many was there in that uh, in that stand over there, 6,000, but uh, it sounded like 26. And uh, I think they thoroughly outsung the Everton fans today. Magnificent. Look like you need a beer. Cheers, Ian. Well done. <laughs> Cheers.